Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as we unbox, assemble, and fly the FMS 800mm uh, Corsair. Let's get to it. Thank you for joining me in this video. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, we'll go ahead and put this together. It's the 800 millimeter. That's the wingspan. It's about 31 and a half inch wingspan of the FMS version of the Corsair. Very nice little model. Weighs about a pound. Four channels of control. And this is what you see. It took about an hour to build. The Corsair was an incredibly important aircraft for the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps in World War II, used primarily in the Pacific. Over 12,500 of these aircraft were built. They fought primarily in the last year and a half of the war. Very effective fighter, very tough. If you've ever been to a real Corsair, they're absolutely huge. And it was, <coughs> had a 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney, Pratt Whitney engine, unheard of power for a carry-based fighter of that time. As always, thank you for likes and subscribes. They truly help the channel. In addition, if you'd like a special discount on this model, if you want to build one for yourself, go ahead and click on the link in the description. The very nice folks at FMS sent me a, their Corsair, the 800 millimeter or 31.5 wingspan version. We're going to do an unboxing right now with the help of Annie. Is that okay, Annie? <laughs> this is the box that came in the mail today. Um, uh, the F4U V2. We'll go over the specifics of the model after we do the unboxing. Some features here. Also note, this is a plug and play version. The plug and play means you've got to provide your own battery, receiver, and transmitter. Uh, and of course, battery charger for the model to fly, but everything else is included. This is what comes inside the box, very well packed. So we'll, and I'm looking at this for the first time. So here's the wing, all assembled with ailerons. There are no flaps or retractable landing gear on this model. The total flight weight is just under a pound, so it's a little bit smaller model. And what will happen is you have individual servos for each aileron here, and the gear will go into here, fixed gear, and then the uh, screws to hold down the wing with the, with the tab located in the front. It's a nice finish. It looks nice. I like the blue, the marking, so that is the wing. This is the horizontal tail with the elevators located like this. And we'll, we'll screw and there's some glue used to put that into place. This is the fuselage, obviously. Nice pilot. Vertical tails with a rudder. Uh, these are the two control horns for each uh, elevator on each side of the stabilizer. And this is the control for the rudder. As part of the construction process, we'll have to install the control horns, which are included, connect them to the um, to the pushing rods, and that'll be that, and then also the um, steerable tail wheel. This is the wiring that we uh, pull through for the um, for the receiver, and then the uh, hatch will be removed to go ahead and um, go inside the uh, plane. And this is the brushless motor installed right here. All very nice, very nice installation. One nice feature of the FMS kits to include this one is the four-bladed prop. These are not easy to make, these four-bladed props. You don't see too many on the market, but this is included. This will go on and provide plenty of thrust. It's a smaller prop, but it has four blades, and it just adds a lot to any World War II fighter aircraft to have an actual four-bladed prop. So that's, that's nice to see that. This is a fuel tank that will go in. And these are the all important bits and bobs needed to complete it. This is going to be the main landing gear. It just plugs in nice little landing gear covers. I like that. This is the um, screws and so forth hub for the propeller to put that all in place. And the final thing, these are some unguided missiles that we can put onto the aircraft. So that is it for the kit. It's about um, four pieces. Everything screws together. There's a little bit of gluing. Connect up the uh, the um, controls. 
four uh, channels, um, elevator, rudder, throttle, and aileron, no flaps, no retractable gear, and, and weighs about a pound. So we'll, we'll go ahead and start construction next. This is the instruction manual, really very good. A lot of pictures, a lot of information on how to put together the Corsair. These are all the parts of the kit uh, that you have to put together. And it just goes together really quick. These are the control linkages and control horns for the various control surfaces. You'll have to screw in the horns for all control surfaces and the Y connector for the two aileron servos. All of the control surfaces come hinged. You can see I've put on the two control horns for the elevator. Those fit right into the um, control horn extensions from the fuselage. These are the cover plates. Be sure to screw the screw in from the cover plate to hold the control horn in place. No glue is needed for this. The included Y cord for the two aileron servos are shown here, and that single uh, connector is, sent in, is connected to your receiver, the appropriate port to control the ailerons. The all-important center of gravity, they have a full page on it, which I like. It's 50 millimeters back. You can see the mark on the wing where the center of gravity is going to be. I had to swap out connectors. I use XT60 connectors for my battery. It comes with JST. You'll have to do that as you see fit. And here I'm just playing around with the fuselage. The receiver is um, starting to get into place. You can see the clearly marked wires go into the appropriate ports to the receiver. Just a very basic, uncomplicated setup. The elevator and rudder servos were placed, the two control horns at each for the two halves of the elevator and for the rudder, the um, steerable tail wheel, as well as the rudder itself. Really a pretty well thought out design. You can see the electronic speed control and the four bladed propeller put in place. You saw in the previous video segments putting the aircraft together, <clears throat> it went together without a hitch. There was, there was just nothing wrong. The directions say you can put one together in 45 minutes. I think that's correct. Your first one may take a little bit longer, but it goes together very well. There's a quite, quite comprehensive owner's manual here. It's a good owner's manual. It has a uh, breakdown of what's in the kit, the various parts, and just how to put things together step by step. It'll, between this and the video instructions um, that we discussed, you should be able to put it together. So let's go through a few of the highlights of this model. So first of all, is a very nice four-bladed prop. It's very easy with the adapter and the hub. It just hand tightens on. <clears throat> the motor's built in. You don't have any access to it. The cowling's all in place. That is just done. And the electronic speed control is connected to everything. We'll show you inside in a little bit. It is four channels of control, rudder, elevator, aileron, and throttle. <clears throat> there are no gear or retractable flaps on this model. Some things to keep in mind as you assemble it, the wing is put in place with a um, notch in the foam, then just two screws screw it in. These fuel tanks slide into place. <clears throat> the rockets are glued in with epoxy. They've got a very innovative, bay, innovative method of putting in the gear. Just follow the instructions. These little latches latch into place. It, they just click into place. That's all you have to worry about. The servos come installed. All the control surfaces are hinged. As you saw, you have to screw and insert the uh, control horns. One important thing I want to point out on the control horns, <clears throat> make sure you put in the screws from the uh, cover plate into the horn, not the other way around. So from the plate into the horn underneath. And that's the same. You'll have to put in uh, five horns, two ailerons, two elevator, and one rudder. The connecting rods work perfectly for the ailerons. The throw is about um, a, quarter, a, a 0.25 inches up and down, and the same for the elevator halves. And there is a, st a steerable tail wheel for taxiing on the ground. The hatch is simply a magnetic hatch. When you get it, there'll be some tape on the back of the magnets, I guess just to for uh, shipping damage. Remove the tape, and they. Um, Click right in place on that metal with a little tongue in front here. The electronic speed control, the rudder, which you have to, uh, excuse me, the receiver that you have to supply. Remember, you have to supply the battery, receiver, and transmitter for this version. I use XT60 plugs, as I mentioned, for the battery, so I had to put that on. And if any four channel rece receiver will work. I have a six channel receiver. Notice for the two control horns, for the elevator, the two halves of the elevator, for the rudder, 
is for the um, rudder itself and the steerable tail wheel. That's really a pretty good way to put it in with the two um, music wire, uh, just very effective. This is the shelf for the battery. It's a 7.2 volt battery, that's a two cell battery, and that just slips right into, the, um, into, the, into that little hatch before. The center of gravity is super important. That's got an entire page on the instructions how to do that. This two line panel is here. And you can see the model balances quite well at the center of gravity with the battery in place. So give you a moment to connect the battery. We'll look at the control, um, uh, how all the controls work, and then we'll have some concluding remarks. Let's take a look at the elevator and rudder controls. So that's up, down. That is what the direction is called for. So we'll try that, the rudder, and notice that the um, Tail, uh, the rudder, the tail wheel steers as well, so that'll help with ground handling. Take a look at the ailerons here. And that is about the right movement, maybe a little bit extra, but that'll be okay. And then we'll apply the throttle. Absolutely plenty of power for this little one pound model. So. I think it looks good. Um, everything's hooked up. We'll just wait for a, a break in the weather. It's been pretty windy here the last few days, and we will take it for a test flight. We're here at the field for the maiden flight of the FMS Corsair, 800 millimeter, 31 and a half inch wingspan. As you saw previously, everything went together well. It's a nice model, um, weighs about a pound, four channels. So I think we're all set. We'll go ahead and put in the two cell battery. One last check of the all-important center gravity to a control surface check that will take it for a flight. All right, now we'll do a control surface check. Elevators, up, down, ailerons, left, right, proper direction, rudder, and throttle. All right, we're set for the test flight. So let me give you a quick preview of the test flights. The first one flew into the grass. It was a little bit squirrely on steering on the ground. I kind of anticipated this with the short distance of the tail wheel to the um, center of gravity. Second takeoff was fine, uh, plenty of power, and the airplane flew flying. Just ran out of elevator authority as we slowed up for landing. As discussed previously, the first takeoff, it turned hard 90 degrees to the left, took off, just clipped the grass there as I dipped down. So for the second takeoff, uh, it's still pulled to the left. I don't know if that was me or whatever, but I had enough airspeed, pulled up, a little bit of a dip there, but settled down and the plane's flying fine. It zips right along with a two cell. A three cell may be an idea if the 20 amp ESC could handle it, but the two cell, you can see it, it handles uh, very well here. The ailerons are just the right amount. The rudder is good for this sort of flight. However, when I slowed down for landing, ran out of elevator authority in the flare to just kind of plunked down. So you may consider adding a little bit more elevator for your version. Well, we finished the test flight of the Corsair. I say I'm pleased with the Corsair. It, it's a Corsair, it's not a trainer. You saw the first takeoff. And what, one thing I was concerned about is with the short distance between the center of gravity and the tail wheel, it could be a little bit squirrely on the ground, and that was the case. Um, in the landing of the tall grass, I had to replace the prop. That was no problem. I had one in the box, provided plenty of thrust. The second flight, you saw it. Um, it doesn't have a ton of extra power. If the ESC can handle it, I might experiment with a three cell. We'll see about that. That would be plenty of power. It flies, honestly. I think for future flights, I'm gonna add a little bit more up elevator. In the landing, I didn't have quite enough to flare out. The ailerons are just fine. Didn't really use a rudder in flight, but it's an honest flyer. It looks like a Corsair in the air. It flies like a Corsair. So I'm looking forward to uh, future flights, practicing the takeoff to uh, just minimize rudder uh, during the takeoff roll. And then when it flies, it flies fine. So. Highly recommend, look forward to you getting one of your Corsairs.